Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. It's a pleasure. It's an honor to be here with you. A couple of shout outs. The show has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards. Thrilling. And as well, just found out we were alerted by Apple Podcasts that we are number 200 in the self-improvement space on podcasts in the USA. And this is fantastic. So thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for loving the conversation. And thank you for writing. I actually follow everything that you guys write. When I can, I write back. And here's what I'm going to recommend, that you subscribe to the show so it comes right in your inbox. And also leave a five-star review, please. Why? Because when you leave a review and somebody knows your feelings or what you enjoy about the program, and they're of a like mind, they're of our tribe, they too will start to listen. And this is major conversation. This is about creating your dreams come true, but it's also about up-leveling at a time when the planet really needs all of us in the best possible way. So when you're here to create your dreams, I'm here to help you get there. So are my guests. I always have exquisite masterclass level people on the show today is no different. And he and I were saying before the show began, how is it possible we haven't met yet? Don't know, but timing is always divine. David Avocado Wolf is here and I'll introduce him in a little bit. And where can you find the show? We're on 40 syndicated outlets, but you can also go, as I said, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spreaker, YouTube, BBS Radio, iHeart Radio. We're on Spotify, Pandora, etc. Go to your favorite outlet. We will be there. And thank you again for supporting the show and for dreaming big. I also want to thank Dr. Dane here for sponsoring the show. Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness do beautiful energy work out into the world. Support them. If you want to take a class, if you want to be healed, if you want to do bars, if you want to get their books, they are worldwide. Go to Dr. Dane here, H e e r dot com as well as accessconsciousness dot com. So my question to you is: Do you want to learn the secret in order to thrive and achieve your best life? And in fact, David even promised he's going to talk a little bit about memory, which I think is a really important subject in a world that is going so fast with so many electronics and so much calling our attention twenty four seven that memory more than ever is so important. And we're living longer, so very important. My guest, David Avocado Wolf, is one of the top health and nutrition experts today. He has 25 plus years of experience in health and wellness, and he's hosted over 3,000 live events. He is the celebrity spokesperson for Nutribullet. That one right there. And Mr. Wolf's Facebook fan Base is close to 13 million strong, making his influence one of the most widely commented and shared in the world. Mr. Wolf is also president of the Fruit Tree Planting Foundation, a nonprofit he founded in 2002 with a mission to plant 18 billion fruit, nut, and medicinal trees around the world. David specializes in superfoods, super herbs, health technologies, peak performance, chocolate, organic farming, and gardening. And you can find out more about him at davidwolf, W-O-L-F-E dot com. And David, welcome to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. Thanks, Debbie. Great to be on your show. And this is going to be fun. And we're going to get into some great stuff. I like your whole energy. You're very mm -hmm. cute. And we're going we're gonna to get into some interesting subject matter and then talk about Conscious Life Expo, which is probably where I'm going to meet you, I would assume. Are you going to be there in uh, a, a couple of weeks here coming up? We're going to be there in LA at the LAX Hilton, I think. I do press media there. I'll be there February 7th through 9th. So tell me right up front, because now I want to write it down. Where are you going to be so I can make sure I am at your workshop? Fantastic. I think my workshop's the noon workshop on Saturday, February 8th. I'm not sure what room that is right off the top of my head. That's and okay. You get a program when you get there. So February 8th. Awesome. I'm definitely going to be there. You will meet me if I can get to the front of the line. And um, that was so interesting in your bio. So you and I are both Jewish. Yes. My dad is Jewish. My mom is actually a Baha'i. Wow. And, um, and so, you know, my mom actually came from, my mom came from Iran, you know, from Tehran. And when the Shah got overthrown in 1978, 79, 
we had to flee the country basically. Mm. And so we came to live a hundred percent of the time in America, but my first language was actually Farsi, um, not English. And I still speak Farsi, um, at least a little bit. And uh, so that's, it's an interesting life that I've lived because I've lived on both sides of the world. And I have also lived in a, a major way as a traveler all over the world. In fact, I haven't been in one place for more than four weeks in 25 years. Oh, that's beautiful. Do you like that nomadic lifestyle? Well, it's, you know, some, you know, the fa- there's an old Roman sa- saying, and it says that if you align with your destiny, the fates will carry you. If you resist your destiny, the fates will drag you. And uh, so I long ago, I had to kind of let go of like, I, it's, it is what it is. And um, it's, diff- it's a difficult life in its way. And it's a wonderful life in its way. And I focus on the wonderful part. Of being That's beautiful. Thank you for that inspiration. That is really timely to hear, I got to say, because I recently got a calling from the divine to explore shaman classes and, you know, exploring becoming a shaman. And I'm like, what? I'm a media girl. I could call myself a media visibil- visibility shaman. That's really strange. And I know when my head gets involved, there's going to be suffering. And if I let go and follow energy, all will be well. I don't have to understand the calling right? That's what you're yeah. speaking to. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's, I, I have faith in, in the best day ever. I have faith in the randomness of, of our reality. And, and because I've been living the best day ever for so long, I, I have faith because I know it's been delivered over and over and over again. So I know there's a, a higher power, a force that listens. Hmm. And that, that really is an important thing because it reconnects you to source and it, and it eliminates the self-doubts that creep into our life that disarm us and make us incapable of, of going out and having the courage to achieve our dreams. So it really, that, that randomness of the universe is something I feel very deeply in harmony with. Well, I was asking you at the onset about being Jewish because as a Jewish female, even though I identify way more as being spiritual, still my upbringing, they would plant a tree when you were born or growing up. In your name, in your honor, there was a tree planted for you in Israel. It's a big practice. And seeing in your bio that you have a mission to plant 18 billion fruit, nut, and medicinal trees around the world, I felt was, well, that's taking it to a whole new level. So will you weigh in? How is that project going? It's going phenomenally well. We've planted over a million trees since I, since I began the foundation in 2002. We just did the last 100 trees of 2019. And so for 2019, we planted 80,636 trees. It was spread phenomenal. out. <laughs> spread out, yeah. And, and uh, over 200, I don't know the exact number, maybe 256 plantings, something like that. Uh, spread out through 365 days of, two, of 2019 and all over the world in five different countries. And we plant at orphanages, we plant at p- public parks and capitals, we plant everywhere. And one of the things that's really wonderful about the Fruit Tree Planting Foundation is, is that it gives opportunities for kids to get educated about nature and about where their food's coming from, which is a big focus for us. We work a lot with children. Mm, Thank you. Thank you. That's so nice. You know, there's a lot of trial and error out there. There's a lot of conflicting information about how to achieve health. And I know you're the guy, you're the go-to, right? So tips and hacks. I feel like in this day and age, we really should be able to avoid any pain and expense from experimenting, but I, it still goes on. So here we are, new year, new up leveling, right? New time and dynamics. It's time. So will you pull back the curtain, David, and will you share some really timely tips we may not know right now for current health practices? Definitely. It, it, that's all I do. I, it's my favorite work, and, and uh, thanks for giving me that opportunity. One of the most important mm-hmm. tips that I've got for you is making sure that you drink enough water. First thing in the morning, drink a liter of water. There's your water right there, right? And, and it's just a great habit to be in. So as soon as you rise in the morning, I actually recommend having the best quality water you can find with a little bit of sea salt, that's your electrolytes, mm. and then a little bit of charcoal in the morning just to suck up all those used up neurotransmitters, deal with the toxicity of the, of the previous day and the detoxification process that goes on at night. When we're horizontal, that's when we detoxify and our body cleans the filters out. That's all we are is just a big grouping of filters. And if we don't get a filter, we're going to become the filter. 
-hmm. and activated charcoal is in every filtration medium. It filters air, it filters water, and it filters us. And so this is one of the great longevity discoveries. It's something I'm going to be talking about at Conscious Life Expo. It's going to be a big focus that if you want to be in that state of peak performance at your best all the time, you got to make sure your body's detoxified. The easiest, simplest detoxification agent that increases your possibility and stacks the odds in your favor for longevity by far in the research is activated charcoal. And I mean by far. There is nothing in all the literature of longevity that's more powerful than activated charcoal for extending the life of animals. Okay. So in my cabinet, because I love vitamins, I love supplements, and you know, I research, I'm a bit of a nerd. So I have activated charcoal, and that's fascinating because the only time I've thought to take it is if I was not feeling well or something was going on in my tummy, I never thought to take it on some kind of a consistent basis. So when you're talking about putting it in the water, would it be correct to take one of those capsules and open up the charcoal and just pour it into the water? That's one way to do it. You're going to create a little bit of a mess, but it's a good way to do it. I, I have my own charcoal that's in tapioca capsules. So that way, like for example, we were doing an event in Los Angeles, big event, a couple thousand people. And, and there was a gal who got a poisoning. She had a, she was having a shock reaction. Mm. And normally if you have a shock reaction, you're rushed off to the emergency room. The very first thing they give you is a charcoal drink mm. in the emergency room to, to neutralize a poisoning. But she was in such bad shape. She wasn't going to make it to the hospital. So they called me up to the room and I just said, here, eat these because she actually couldn't swallow. She was having that bad of a shock reaction. So she just was able to chew those up. And that's why we do those in tapioca capsules because you can literally just chew them up if you need to. A lot of what's out there is in gelatin caps or even in V caps, which you can't chew those up. Mm -hmm. um, you have to actually swallow them or open them. Opening them's great. It's fine, but it's going to create a little bit of a mess. And so the, that's the kind of thinking that's gone into this kind of area for me over the years. I've been on the activated charcoal as a regular thing in my diet for five years. And before that, it was like you, it was like, oh, I, you know, if I have an upset stomach or, you know, some kind of stomach bug or stomach flu, then the activated charcoal. But now from the research I've been doing on it, now I know the truth. And, and it's a power and effect on you to wake you up, get your head sharp, essentially detoxify you, which becomes very important as we age, v much more important when you're 60 than when you're 20. Hmm. When you're 20, you get away with anything. Um, but when you're 60, it's a whole different story. And, and that has become the focus of many of the gerontologists who've been researching activated charcoal for longevity, is that it becomes much more important later in life. And the sea salt, is there a certain amount that you recommend we put into the water? I like a pinch or two just to start out with, just to get the feel for it. But there's something that has not been announced to all of us that we do need to know about. It's an ancient wisdom and it's ancient old brand new, as I like to say. I like that, that phrase. And it's the power of sea salt to neutralize autoimmune loops and autoimmune looping. So when somebody gets an autoimmune response, it's hard to shut that response off. That's a loop that keeps going and going and going. And one of the best ways to shut that off is drinking salt water. It'll neutralize allergies, asthma, IBS, Crohn's on the spot. It's amazing how quickly it works. And it's just so simple that we just forgot about it, you know, because everything today has to be super complex and we need all these complex things and we got to go back to the basics and the original stuff. And I, I actually will put that out there. Anybody who's dealing with autoimmune stuff like allergies, asthma, et cetera, drink salt water. Now for that kind of dose, I'd recommend actually a tablespoon per liter of sea mm -hmm. salt. Now that's a lot, mm -hmm. um, but that's what, it, that's what it takes. Wow. I know a lot of people I'm going to ping so that they listen to this. This is really important information. And what, what else? Are there any other discoveries for longevity that you've been researching or on the cutting edge about? One of my favorite discoveries, it, it comes out of Taoism and my good friend Ron Teagarden right there in Los Angeles, Dragon Herbs and, and his wonderful things yes. he's doing with him and his people. Mm. Right, He's right in your hood over there. He is. In West Hollywood. On Robertson. Yeah, he's right on Robertson, right? Beverly Hills, basically, in West Hollywood. And, and one of the things he's really educated me on and, and led me down a track of research that eventually I wrote a book on it. I never have published that book. Um, I've, I've been working on the book for literally six years at this point, which is on colors. Black foods increase longevity, endurance, and endurance. They, they increase your overall, what we call in Taoism, jing, which is your vital life force. So this is very interesting because charcoal is black. Right. 
And if we look at all the black foods like chaga mushroom, black sesame oil and black sesame seed, mm. black cumin and black cumin seed, and you look at its history in Middle Eastern countries for longevity from Israel to Iran, it's really interesting. Black foods increase longevity. So whenever you're looking at like, okay, what do I got at brown rice? Well, let me tell you, black rice is the new brown rice. Yeah, and there is black rice. Wow, that is fantastic. And I, you know what I really appreciate about this? This is easy. The no, stuff easy. Doing, everything's, everything's easy. There's, there's never, no that's investment here. I mean, who nutrition. cannot go out to get sea salt, right? Or charcoal tablets or fine foods that are black, the chaga and... And the sesame, I mean, this is- Blackberries. 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 Mm. And then when you look at some of our more popular foods that we really love, that we know influence longevity, one of the big ones is the olive. And, and uh, one day, you know, if we ever get to hike in Los Angeles, I'll take you actually, the place to hike in Los Angeles this is a big secret to everybody. I grew up in LA. I've been there since 1978. I've been in San Diego since 1977. So I, my history in Southern California goes way back. One of the most amazing discoveries and all that is where to go hike in LA. And the best place to hike in LA is Beverly Hills, right on the streets of Beverly Hills. There's no one around. Mm. Almost all of Beverly Hills is empty, especially in the winter. No one's there. So <laughs> one out of every five houses is under construction. No one's in the other houses. You just walk the streets of Beverly Hills. It's just the most amazing thing. One amazing house after another, after the most amazing fruit tree set up. And mm. it's just incredible. And when you're doing that, you, you get to see these really interesting things that people are growing. And one of the foods that's very prominent in all of Los Angeles is the olive tree. Mm. And olives produce a black food. If you let the olive do its natural thing and ripen naturally, it becomes a black food. And olive oil influences longevity by 9 to 18%. That's the highest of any food known and well studied, which means, let's say we're a human that's supposed to get your natural lifespan, which I would say is 100 years. That's arguable, but let's just say it's 100 years. It's easy okay. for the math. If nine to eighteen percent increase in lifespan means one hundred and nine to one hundred and eighteen years, mm -hmm. that's the influence. Now, let me tell you how crazy this activated charcoal thing is in animal research. Animal research. This is by far, by the way, the biggest breakthrough in longevity of all time, and this has been known. That's the thing that really irks me about it. Like we never got this on the news, but we do get it here. So that's fake news. Your real news. Um, <laughs> It, it, activated charcoal can influence the lifespan of animals by 21 to 47 percent. Okay. So how do we get, so I have a dog. How do I give it to my dog? Just put it in their water. So in that case, you would have to actually open up a capsule and just mix it in their water. You take your Nutribullet and just blast it in water and just put it in there. Your dog will lap that up. They know, they have a sense of these things. Animals have, they know things. They have, their instinct is intact. And so <laughs> they know. This is incredible. Um, my dog got very sick. I'm trying to remember, she got into something she should not have gotten into, but she ate way too much of it. And she literally had the runs. Man, this house was a mess, right? Oh. Um, every day, cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up. Such a good, sweet dog, but boy, for two days, bad. And my girlfriend said, Debbie, give her charcoal. Duh, had never considered it. Sure enough, I sprinkled charcoal in her food, gone. I mean, literally, you could see in her next bowel movement, it started to harden. And mm -hmm. then right after that, it was completely gone. And poor creature, you know, it's a lot electrolytes to lose like that. But yes, charcoal is brilliant. And so from now on, both she and I are on it every day. Sea salt, black foods, fantastic. So I want to ask a little bit about, you know, you're an entrepreneur, basically. And you've been in this space a long time. You've seen a lot, you've done a lot, you're talking about the kind of lifestyle that you have. I imagine from the inception of where you began to where you be today, that meaning has changed a lot for you. So I'm really curious, what about your life or your profession has changed? What means something to you in your world? Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. There's been so, I mean, I started out before there was the internet. <laughs> I had the first website up in the whole world that had coconut oil on it and goji berries and cacao and all these things that are today are in every health food store. That's how far back I go. We had the first websites in the world that were, that sold those things online. I mean, I started out when Amazon started. Mm. And so it's been an interesting journey. I mean, today, what I like to do now is if, if somebody's like, like a Novak Djokovic, who's one of my friends, and, and we helped him come all the way back from a career ending injury to number one ranked tennis player in the world again. 
which everyone said was impossible. He couldn't do it on a plant-based diet. You couldn't even believe the trolling that was going on against him and all this stuff. And he made it all the way back. I mean, when he won Wimbledon in 2018, he came back and won Wimbledon in that time. Then he won again in 2019. We cried. I mean, it was just a totally powerful experience. So the, 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 the way I like to serve those types of clients, you know, through like a VIP intensive day where we, or two days, is really something that's become nearer and dearer to my heart it, because it used to be, you know, do an hour consultation, but I really like to do that deep dive with those types of clients that are, that are capable of, of being there for that and really have the resources to be there for that and go all the way and, and, and become, you know, the great being that they are with all the tools that I have. And, and I've got a lot of tools that you can imagine 25 years of being at the front of the internet. And I had one of the, most successful pages on Facebook, and if not the most engaged page page on Facebook, as a side hobby, just this is what the power of getting your brain on straight. Hmm. As a side hobby, just as a like little thing on the side, we built my Facebook page up to almost 13 million people, just between really one me, and then eventually I hired someone to help me, and then I hired another person, just between the three of us. We were beating every single website in the world in engagement, like 1.7 billion hits per month. That was just, that's, I'm, I'm a nutritionist. That's not my job. It was just fun on the side. I mean, that's the power of nutrition. It really is. And so that's another thing that's been really interesting is if you want to, I can show you how to master social media if that's what you want. I mean, eventually I had to get away from that because it was, it started, stopped becoming fun for me. And I'll probably reboot it back up this, this year just because it's become more fun again. Uh, well, but I need to focus so on I two questions about that. And the first is, so you mentioned social media and, you know, side hobby and you're good at it, clearly. What does it take? You know, because it keeps changing. Algorithms change, technology change. And frankly, more importantly, I think people get really bored because they get creamed by the same thing over and over. So everything has to change and it changes. And then everyone else is doing that. We get bored. And so it's constant, right? It's, it's constant um, getting stimuli, really. What is the way to find, because I think most of us are really just heart-based entrepreneurs with a gift to deliver to the world. How do you recommend engagement and to get the best followers and tribe who are our people to want to play with us? Great question. One thing is you, you just have to be authentically yourself. You have to be authentically yourself and you have to really be a people person. Mm. I am a people person. That's why I've done all those live events, thousands of live events over all these years. I like being around people. I like being with people. And that there's a good side of that and there's a bad side of that because there, you know, people in this world, they'll love you. They'll hate you. They'll, they, you know, but that's the, that's the price you'll pay. So you have to take that on if you're a people person. And that's the same as true with social media. You're going to get your lovers. You're going to get your haters. You're going to get the people in between. But it has to be an authentic message for you. And you also have to be the type of person that's, you're, I'm ready to go at 3 a.m. I'm ready to go at 5 a.m. I'm ready to go at 11, 11 a.m. I'm ready to go to 11, 11 p.m. It doesn't matter. I'm ready to go at all times because that's the type of person that I am. If you're the type of person who's like, oh, I've got to work a nine to five, then I've got to sleep here to there. Social media is not going to be your, your real wheelhouse because sometimes we'll wake up three in the morning and be like, I got to post this right now. It's going now. It, you know, that's just how that, that is. And, so, you know, and are you saying, because you're up at all those hours and you've got all that energy. So for you to keep engaging work. Yes. Right. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. And, and that's, you have to have the energy, right? So when I take people in, into an intensive, a one-on-one -on -one, all day, eight hours with me, first thing we're doing is we're getting into, do you have the energy? Where's your energy at? And then we, then we got to work on that first. I'm not even going to take someone to a day two with me unless they've got the energy for day one. You know what I mean? I can tell pretty quickly from the, when, cause we do a lot of preparatory work before somebody actually gets in front of me. You know, I want to see their lab work. I want to see other, this other stuff. And I can tell right away, okay, is this person going to be ready for day two? Like Novak, he's full on. He's re always ready for day two and day three. He's ready for anything. Um, but it, it's different per person. So we, we have to have the energy for these peripheral things like social media uh, in order to be a success today. And that is very much a health and nutrition thing. 
that's a what else thing. do you cover in your VIP day? It sounds fascinating. Well, one thing I do is I do, I do, I do a particular type of body work that I was taught by a gentleman named VRL Suchi, who was, he worked for my dad way back when, when I, 1986, and he, he defected from Romania. He was Nadia Comaneci's personal trainer mm. and he, he defected. So on one of these trips, he just like, I'm not going back. And he just came to America and stayed and uh, sought political asylum here and, and got it. And he taught me about the energy centers of the neck, the five energy centers, boom, these two right here these two right here and the one in the mid back right there. And, and he taught me his system that basically what makes us unique as, as a human being is we have a neck. There is no primate with a neck. We're the only primate that has a neck. And this is the best reflexology there is, is our neck. It's like a three dimensional guitar. And these are all our strengths. And we have tension that I can get into those strings and be like, Oh, there it is right there. There's the tension. So that's part of what we do. Another thing is I like to do, um, a complete breakdown of where somebody is at and where we can take their good and bad habits and advance them. For example, I was talking about a friend today who liked to drink alcohol with his friends on weekends and playing poker. And so we designed a strategy where he would put the herbs in the, in the vodka. So his friends never knew he was drinking herbs. So he's taking the vodka, he's doing shots of vodka, playing poker with his friends, but it's got the herbs in it. Stuff like that. I mean, we'll just break it down to the nth degree and, and, we, and then we have a, you know, a really good day together. So we, we share the, all that time together plus lunch and you get to have one of my lunches. So it's not going to just be avocado toast. It will be. <laughs> uh, and, and another thing I like to do a lot is really working with the, the attitude of the best day ever and what that really looks like. And that, that moves us. If if somebody's really there, they have the energy, then we go to into day two and we, we, this is the basic formula. It's do you do your best? That's 111%. And that's times your non-attachment. You can't be attached to like, Oh my God, this person hated me, even though I helped them. It's like, throw that out the window. And then you have to be in alignment. I think we talked about this before was this idea of the randomness of the universe and, and, the holy flow, like you might give all your energy to this, you're going to do it. And then all of a sudden this incident comes up or the scenario comes up. Can you roll with it? Can you, can you see the magic and the hyper synchronicity of that moment and roll with that? That's a very important piece of, of being successful in my opinion, and, and really being in your best health ever. And then the other piece is minus irritants and inflammation. So we remove those as best we can from your diet and lifestyle. And then that's equals the best day ever. I love it. So we've got two hashtags, hashtag best day ever, hashtag holy flow. I love that. That could be the name of your book, holy flow. <laughs> that was, it was my neighbor, a very interesting man who left the earth last year, actually, almost a year ago in February, February 22nd, 2019. And and he gifted me that phrase, the holy flow, of the, of the blue glow and the holy flow. It's profound, and it's exactly what it is, of course. It says it in two words. Um, so entrepreneurs who are listening to this, and they want to learn how you built your empire. And you said there's going to be lovers, there's going to be haters, there's all sorts of people out there. So clearly, like any entrepreneur, I'm sure you've had bad or tough business experiences or moments what did you learn from the difficult times that you chose to alter going forward? How did your practices change? And, and or what did you stop engaging in that created better for you and your company? One of the things that I learned over the years is, is you're going to have to be responsible. So what I've learned over the years is basically I've gotten rid of almost every business partner. Mm. Um, I had business partners who ripped me off, stole this, stole that, opened up a shop down the street that were selling my products with my name on it, my face on it. And, and I didn't even know about it. I mean, you name it, all kinds of stuff like that. And so I had to, it's like this, trust in God and tie up your camels. <laughs> you, you have to be aware that people are of an untoward disposition. They, they may, they don't have the same feelings in their heart or they don't come from a place of love or I, you know it's all that stuff or people that i knew in la even for 18 years i was 
partners with them for, in many businesses, they, they're like, we're going we're gonna to take everything. And they basically tried to steal everything. Fortunately, I saw all that coming kind of in advance. And I, because I've been, you know, I've had a lot of experience. So I was, I just don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's another thing I learned. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you're going to do a joint venture with somebody, make sure you have other opportunities in other places mm -hmm. and other businesses going at the same time. And that's where I'm at now is, is I have many, I'm diversified. I have a diverse uh, business portfolio, I guess is what right. I'm exactly. Right. Exactly. That's beautiful. Well, we're going to take a quick break here and we'll be right back. We have a lot more questions. I even have somebody who wrote in a question, one of the listeners, and I'll make sure to address that. And folks, if you are interested in bumping up your visibility, that's what I do out in the world, visibility shaman. And I help people coach them to write a book. I've got a company that guarantees your book reaches international bestseller. And I teach you the ultimate visibility formula, how you can be interviewed on radio and podcast in 60 days or less, even if you don't have prior media knowledge, or even if you don't know where the shows are. If you're ready for the class and as an entrepreneur, <laughs> how could you not be? It's one of the greatest tools existing out there when you know how to speak authentically, and uh, deliver your message and your content. Receive in the class a list of the shows and contacts, where they are, who to talk to. You'll have your media kit built during the class. You'll have your speaker points. You'll know how to avoid freezing or fudging during an interview, and instead you'll feel very confident and savvy. So who is the program for? Well, it's for you if you want to be seen as an authority in your field and if you want to start being interviewed in six weeks or less. Go to debbyd.net slash visibility. Remember, I do not have an I in my name. So it's D-E-B-B. -B. Excuse me, I don't have an E at the end. It's D-E-B-B-I. -B -B -I. I do have an I. D-E-B-B-I-D.net slash visibility. Join us there. And if you're just tuning in after, after I've started, this is Debbie Dashinger on Dare to Dream. I'm interviewing health and wellness expert, David Avocado Wolf. He will be at the Conscious Life Expo coming up. Definitely go see him there. And his website is davidwolf.com. So David, let's address this audience question. This is from a Canadian, uh, Lisa Lajoie, who says, David, what is the best way to take care of skin, especially for women, because of all we go through with hormones and makeup and more, what do you recommend to be the best skin practices? That's such a great question. The skin is the last place to get nutrition. It's the furthest out. So women have a sense that they need to nourish their skin from the outside in. Men don't have that sense as much. They're not as interested in that, but women get that. They understand that. And I really like the basics. I like going to coconut oil. I like going to olive oil. I like going to sea buckthorn oil. And probably if I had to say one of the best products that I ever got behind over the years and partly developed is the, it's called the best skin ever, which is by my friends over at Living Libations. And they, they have a little office in Venice and they're out of Canada and uh, we've been best friends for 20 years and we've done a lot of really fun things together, but it's a sea buckthorn based formula. I think it's really important that you do the, the saunas, the hots and the colds, you do the peels. So you get that outer layer off, you do the scrubbing. So you get that dead layer of skin off and that you get the right kind of nourishment coming right from the outside in. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to that, I really like those three sea buckthorn, olive oil, and coconut oil. Now, well, there's one more, of course, which is cacao butter oh. and chocolate oil. And, and that's, that, that's like a noble essence, right? The oil of chocolate or, or cocoa butter is what was originally in all the suntan lotions and, until they replaced it with cheap vegetable oil. But in the old days, back in the 1930s and before, it was always cacao butter or cocoa butter. And this is for like the fine lines in the face, especially you just take a piece of it and just rub it right in it just melts you can put it on your lips it's just the best thing ever and also you smell like chocolate <laughs> which is a good thing and what about shea butter are you a fan shea butter is good i've just i've had experiences over the years of poor quality shea butter when I was in that business and buying shea butter and I got a bad batch and smelled like diesel or, you know, all kinds of problems I had with, with shea butter, but it's a good one. If you can get the good stuff, I, I'm a big fan of good quality shea butter for sure. And, uh, but I, I also like going to the stuff that's so like 
tried and true, which shea butter is, but for the worldwide market, you know, olive oil, cacao butter, coconut oil, sea buckthorn, those are big, big players in the game. So and use those like as makeup removers. Use those as put instead of putting a cream on your face, put that on to soften yes. the face and the lines and and find the one that's right for you. For example, what's it's interesting, like coconut oil. It, for my face, no. Cacao butter for my face, yes. Mm. It'll work there. Or or sea buckthorn for all parts of my body is just amazing. And um, olive oil is really interesting for me because I'm more Mediterranean, right? Mediterranean, you know, ancestry. So it just works for me. Other people like olive oil. I don't, that wouldn't use that on my skin. It's just, you have to really try it out. But if you look at the at the formulas that are out there, a lot of times they have a mixture of these things. It's like olive oil and coconut oil and cacao butter, a little bit of, you know, each one, there's a little bit of vanilla, stuff like that. And I like those basic formulas rather than the complex stuff. Okay. Yeah. Great answer. I, um, I make my own body oils, right? So I find some kind of conduit at first, and then I nerd out and I research what oil does what for the body. Something's for scars, something's for wrinkles, something is for X, Y, Z. And they smell divine. And somehow when I put them together in concert, they actually smell like nobody would need perfume, you know, to use this. And it's very faint, but lovely. And I'll use that right after the gym or, you know, yoga. And I take a shower and I put that on and I, I think it keeps my skin amazing. So I recommend things like that too. Sometimes, um, Almond oil can be easy to work with, or I will, I'll get my, uh, my coconut oil and olive oil, put those in the bottle, put in the essential oils, and then voila, ready. Excellent. I'm, I'm a big fan in the essential oil world of, of frankincense. I'm a huge frankincense guy. And I also like lemon and lime a lot. I like sandalwood. There's many of them that I like, but I'm, my main one's frankincense. And, and by the way, something just to know about me and, and for your people to know about me is I've grown it all. I've been a chocolate grower for 15 years. I have 300 chocolate trees. I've, I've got 40 avocado trees. Anything you name, you name whatever superfood, I've grown it. It's not just that I'm out there talking about it. I'm not just like, oh, you know, this is the best thing because I read on some website or read some book about it. It's like, I've been growing that stuff for years. I've been growing sea buckthorn for 15 years. Mm. You know what I mean? So I have that perspective that I, I, I just don't feel it's honest for a nutritionist to be talking about something, a food in particular, unless they actually grew it. That's just my per personal you know, perspective and viewpoint. And I can talk from that perspective because when you grow something, you know something about it that is a mystery yeah. or is often not known. That makes sense. It seems there would be an intimacy. You're essentially yes. planting a seed, giving birth, helping it grow, finding out what works, what doesn't work, uh, what, what makes it become proficient. Maybe you discover new ways to use it. Maybe it talks to you. I believe in these things, you know, coaching people in books. I always tell people, you know, you don't have to think so much. The book will tell you. So I'm sure your plants tell you often what they want and need. Definitely. Cleve Baxter showed in his book, Primary Perception, with his thousand studies on plants, that plants are telepathic. They're always tuning in on what's going on at all times, and they can communicate with you in your dreams, and they do. And I've had that happen. And this is not a fantasy. It's not woo-woo. You know, people say that's woo are actually materialists. They're not really scientists. They're into scientism which is we'll only believe things that are materialistic and scientific rather than everything that's scientific, which might not be materialistic. And so I, did, I make that distinction. And that, that, has, that is very interesting distinction because our culture and our civilization is very scientismic, hmm. but not actually very scientific. And there is a difference. So if you're not into materialism, but you're into science, oh, we got we to gotta shut you up because we, we can't be having that. And that's what they did to Cleve Baxter. We can't have, this can't be real. We've got, it's pseudoscience and all the stuff that they say. Um, it is, look, Cleve Baxter's research and his thousand experiments is profound. My friend, Dr. Patrick Flanagan recently passed off the earth and his 10,000 experiments that he did in his life, you're not going to assail his scientific credibility. He's one of the most proficient scientists that ever lived. He's one of the most proficient scientists of the 20th century. And he ended up not being a materialist. He was scientific, but not scientismic. And it goes to follow that if people out there believe everything is energy, then everything has intelligence. It must. 
It must. It, I'm, I'm one of those people who believes that. I never really bought that this is dead and that's not. And th this, you know, this is something that can't communicate with me because it's a rock, but, um, but this can't because this is a person. We can learn so much from rivers and brooks and trees and probably a lot more than if we meditate on them, a lot more than we can learn from books. So I, I'm just compelled to ask you, what are your thoughts on plant medicine? Oh, I love plant medicine. I've been growing some of the world's greatest plant medicines for 20 years. Really? So, you know, when it comes to ayahuasca, I've grown ayahuasca for 15 years. And I have a crazy story recently yeah. with that. And I've grown Wachuma and I've, all of them, you name it. I've grown it all for 15, 20 years. And so that, you know, I come from that perspective. I'm one of the few that do. And, and that's a very important perspective to have. Um, Risa, you want to hear a story? I love, yes, please. It's especially so, plant well, we, medicine. We, I'm going to release this video on the internet at some point soon. I've, we videoed this. This is super wild. I'm not a big, I, you know, I've drank ayahuasca over a hundred times in my life. So I've you know, been to the Amazon, done the whole process. I love Amazonian shamans. I'm not the person who serves the ayahuasca, but everybody at my house on Christmas Eve wanted to do ayahuasca. So we had some home brew that was made from our own stuff that was made by a shaman that I brought to the property in 2014. And we brewed up jars and then sealed them when they were hot. So they're airtight and they will last for years that way. And I opened up one of those and we decided we're going to drink it for Christmas. And this was like, I don't know, maybe five. Damn, I was at the wrong Christmas party. You were at the wrong Christmas party. So <laughs> Christmas, we do that. We all, we all sit around, we drink this. And I'm like, look, I'm, you know, I'm just so you know, I'm not a shaman. This is just, I'm going to offer this up. I'll do the best I can to hold the space. I've been involved in many shamans all over the world. Some of the best shamans in Peru are some of my best friends. And so, you know, I have a lot of experience there. So anyway, we drink the, we drink the brew. We, we, one of us has three, the rest of us have two, two cups, normal night, all sitting in meditation for hours and hours. And then eventually I get two of the guys and we're like, let's go sit on, on the balcony. Cause you know, one of the things with, with, um, ayahuasca and one of the things that ayahuasca taught me is about tobacco and what the truth is about tobacco mm. and what the, what we've got with tobacco is a complete abomination at every level. It's the most unbelievable toxic thing ever because nicotine is a driver. And when you take that and you chemicalize it, you're driving all those synthetic chemicals in the human body. One of the most dangerous things ever, but tobacco can also drive your prayers into every cell in your body with that nicotine. And, and that's what tobacco is. It's an amplifier and driver. So I was like, okay, let's, you know, we had this Amazonian tobacco. We're going to go outside and we're going to participate in a prayer, prayer smoke outside. So we go outside and there's an intense windstorm going down. I mean, it's like tornado level, really intense. And, you know, I live in Hawaii, so this is rare for us. And right at the peak of the experience, right at the peak of all that, maybe an hour we're sitting outside, there's a, some kind of a crazy sound that comes. I thought it was in the front yard. But it actually, as we found out a couple of days later, it was in the backyard. That night, the tree with the ayahuasca on it, which is actually called a Christmas berry tree mm. on Christmas Eve, was taken down in a windstorm after 12 years that ayahuasca had been growing on it. And the whole ayahuasca and everything came off and, and fell down the hill in a big clump of mass at the top of the tree, which is what the ayahuasca wants. That's what most vines want. Most vines are going to bring a tree down eventually. And then they put their little roots into the, the decaying debris of the, of the top of the tree, essentially. It, it's an outrageous scene and an outrageous incident that I've never seen ever in all my years living in Hawaii, that's for sure, ha all on the same night. So the tree with the ayahuasca came down that night and and we filmed it and we're going to have a video for you on it. So stay tuned for that. I'll put it, probably put it up on YouTube, most likely. What did you feel like the message was in that? Why do you well, think- Well, there was a message that like, you don't mess around with ayahuasca. You do not mess around with ayahuasca. And, and me serving the ayahuasca, I'm not going to be serving that anymore. Sorry. Nope. I'm not a shaman. That's not my deal. Um, so I got a very strong message about that. And it was, it was a very, very powerful statement of like, cause some, a lot of times and people who drink ayahuasca know this, it can really kick your booty. Yep. And, and so sometimes that happens in an internal thing that happens. But in this particular case, it happened to be an external thing. I mean, it ripped those trees right out of the ground. I've never seen anything like it except in a tornado. Wow. There must have been a tornado. And it, it happened right in a particular spot where we had, it's at the very, very top of the property in the middle. It's like, it's a spot where we had actually put stones and magnetite and stuff in the earth right there mm. years ago, 12, 13 years before. That's profound. Yeah. I want to see that video. 
I have a friend who became enamored with San Pedro because it's a readily available cactus. And he was making cuttings, starting to grow it, and then starting to brew it and drink it. And I had really uncomfortable feelings about that because this is, you know, I think it's really important to remember this is not recreational. This, there's, there's a very sacred process about why we ingest this and why we allow ourselves to commune with the divine and, you know, the healing matrix that's possible for us, and especially to do that alone. So I think he's very fortunate that nothing's happened to him, but it's like, oh, I, I wouldn't even, I, I would only, I only like to do it in very uh, definitive circumstances that are very safe and provocative for the best possible outcome. So for those who, who've, yeah, thank you for that. I, was, I agree with you, totally agree with you. And, and for those who are new to this conversation, people always ask me, well, then why would you want to do something like ayahuasca or wachuma, San Pedro cactus or, or Native American church peyote cactus or something? And, it, and it's because it cures you of a very, very deep wound that we have as Westerners. And that is our separation from nature. Mm -hmm. it, it pretty much cures you of this idea that we're an isolated consciousness. It actually brings you back to the idea that everything is imbued with consciousness. Every stone, every tree, every plant, every rock, every herb, everything in our reality is imbued with consciousness. And so that, that has a very powerful healing effect. You know, when we, when we do that one day intensive, like when I do take people on a one day intensive, we look at one of those key factors, which is, it, it seems to be underneath everything, which is where is the separation at from source? Mm -hmm. Because there, in that place, that's where the, the self-doubt will creep in. Mm -hmm. And that's where it will slip in and start to separate you from being able to take action, from courage, from your ability to pursue your dream. I concur completely. And I can say as somebody, you know, I'm a great example because I held so many judgments previously. And then Grandmother Ayahuasca called me. And it is, if people want to know what does that mean, it means you know you must. You know something has just tapped you on the shoulder and said, you, this way, come this way. And then I knew I had to. And of course, as you're talking about the holy flow, everything not only happened for me so quickly and so elegantly, but Mother, Grandmother Ayahuasca gave me sign after sign that I was held and taken care of. Some of the strangest things that it was, there was no mistake that I was still being called. And I will tell you that after having done it four back-to-back -back nights, I've had a few experiences, but I, I know the calling isn't done. There's so much more, I'm ready. And I love the fact you can heal physically without doing anything but drinking and allowing uh, beings to come facilitate you. You can commune with the divine and have conversation. You can be rewired. You can learn information you never knew. There are so many ways to do this. And just to David's point, it is literally like as Westerners, we have a veil that disconnects us and it is removed. And it is so joyous to see sacred geometry in grass and uh, know that the moon is completely alive and for us and connecting with us. I could go on and on. I could do a whole show about this, but I'm so grateful that you're being so transparent to share this because I think it's a really important conversation right now. It's very important. It, it's again, it's healing one of the primary wounds of Western civilization, which is our separation from nature. And that's also what food does food, you know, when you grow your own food, especially, but it starts, you know, it's a process. It's a step-by-step -step process of like, okay, let me go organic. What about this bio certified? Because we're a certified biodynamic farm. We're certified organic and biodynamic or certified organic and biodynamic. So we have the top certifications in the world for our farm because mm -hmm. that's how much we care. I go, I'll go all out to get all of that because I want quality for qualitarians out there. <laughs> I mean, one diet we can all agree on is qualitarianism. I've never heard that word before. Really? Yeah. That's, that's a strong right? one. Yeah, quality. You, it, look, I'm a vegetarian for 30 years. Um, I was 100% vegan for 20 years. And I can tell you from my experience that there is right diets for some people and right diets for others. I like what Rudolf Steiner said. I think he's right. There's, there are as many diets in the world as there are human beings on earth. Because it has to do with your ethnic background, your personality, where you live, your latitude, 
what your personal goals are, where you want to go in the future, what's happened in the past. There's so many factors that come in, what's available to you. And so we look at all of that when it comes to nutrition and therefore it's going to be a little bit different depending on where you are and what time of year it is and all of that. So there, but there are parameters, things like the color of the food affects you. Red, by the way, is cardiovascular Mm. and heart. So red foods are for, and herbs are for cardiovascular and heart. Yellow is for building new tissue and creating new tissue. White is the, is the blank tablet, the tabula rasa, the blank tablet. So if you're somebody, I get people who are completely digestively broken down. They can digest maybe 10 foods. We get them on white foods to rebuild them back up. I've always wondered why. I've heard that before, potatoes and rice and to do white foods, because I went through that once. I stopped completely digesting for three months, which is really terrible. Um, and somebody put me on only white, and I never, I never got it. So say a little more about that. Well, the, the food is that it's a doctrine of signatures, but the color is even more profound than the texture, the shape and the, the flavor of the food. All of those things indicate and tell us what the food is good for. We've all seen that before where you cut like a carrot in half, it looks like an eye. You see a walnut and it looks like your brain. You know, we've all heard that stuff before, but the color is even more profound and more important and more obvious. Everything in the world is obvious. Everything is obvious. So we got so complex that we, we became, you know, I, I don't know what the, I'm trying to think of a soft way of saying it we became less than intelligent. Mm -hmm. We lost our intelligence because we, we lost the obvious and we have to get back to obvious. Now there's other colors like brown. That's an obvious one. What comes out of you that's brown? Mm -hmm. You eat brown foods, pretty soon stuff's going to be coming out of you that's brown. That's so like coffee, laxative in the morning. Almost everybody drinks coffee because they want to have that laxative effect in the morning and that stimulant get them up and working, right? So this is something that's deep. It's chocolate. You eat too much chocolate, boom, it's coming out. Any, you, you think of the greatest laxatives in the world, like senna. What's senna? It's a brown pod. Very obvious stuff. But because we got so smart, we just completely lost the, the plot. Green. Green is deodorizer, neutralizer, detoxifier, mm -hmm. and heart, right? Green is heart chakra. And so this thing about the green movement, it's very interesting. I remember having one time I was doing a lecture in Vancouver and there was the head of the Green Party of British Columbia right in the front there. And I kept harping on him because I kept going, you know, the Green Party's great, but the chocolate party's better. <laughs> the chocolate party's better. And, and at, at the end of it, he said, well, how do I join the chocolate party? And I was like, you're already in. There's no paperwork. There's no bureaucracy. We're getting rid of all that. You know, this is the future. There's no politics in the future. There's no more paperwork. You don't have to join anything. You're just in. Once you understand, you realize it's automatic. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Oh, thank you for sharing that. I think people are going to get so much out of that. Uh, we're going to take a very quick break before we come in with the final questions. Again, this is Dare to Dream. I feature very successful, brilliant leaders, as you can see, people who have created really important goals. So my question is, how about you? What would you do if you could live completely free and bold? What kind of dream would you create? I hope you will become part of the Dare to Dream team. This podcast is the number one transformation conversation available. You can help the show today by donating a dollar or more, and you can go to patreon.com slash dare to dream. I post shows and more there for you. Consider supporting Dare to Dream. If you appreciate the program, if you enjoy the insights that are being offered here, they help you fulfill your big purpose. And obviously today being healthy is everything to get there. Learn the ways to live healthy and create your big dreams. Help out at patreon.com slash dare to dream. And this is Debbie Dashinger. I'm interviewing the health and wellness expert, David Wolf. You can find out more about David Avocado Wolf at davidwolf.com. David, I don't want to forget. So let's talk a little bit about memory. Oh, good one. Right? It's so, real, this, is a, this is big. 
Um, so I came to Texas. I'm in Houston, Texas right now, actually, which is not a normal spot for me. You know, I don't get to Texas often, but I love Texans. I love people, you know, as I mentioned before. So it's, it's important for me to get around to places like, like Houston is such a big city. And when I come here, there's a great place, Deer Lake Lodge, where I'm, where I'm uh, hanging out and they have a great colonics system. So the oh. very first thing I want to say about memory and brain fog is go and get an enema or a colonic or clean your bowels out and watch what happens up here. Because two days ago, I did a full colonic there and about an hour. And I'm talking, it's like a equivalent to like 10 or 15 or sometimes 20 enemas. And when you clear that all out of you, all of a sudden this starts working better. So that's number one before we get into anything. It's basically to get your brain working better, you need to detox. So let right? me ask you, uh, weigh in on Dead Sea colonics and weigh in on coffee enemas. I'm a big fan of coffee enemas because of the glutathione production. And it's one of the big discoveries. We get people on a cleanse every year. So we are uh, twice a year, actually. And one's coming up March 13th. And uh, what we do is we, we get people doing coffee enemas to get that glutathione activated, get that liver dumping the toxins, get that gallbladder squeezing and, and get things upstream cleansing. that's going to drive everything out the bottom. Now, dead sea salt. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, there's, um, mm-hmm. I'm, well, I'm a, you know I'm a big fan of sea salt. I'm a big fan of Dead Sea mud. Topically, by the way, we talk about skincare. I'm a big fan of using activated charcoal and clay and mud topically. Huge. And for dental also. Huge. Um, especially charcoal for, for dental. Once oh, I'm so excited because I'm using actually uh, charcoal toothpaste. I was uh, just intuitively very drawn to it, but I, you're so right about the skin. But of course, I'm going to start doing that. How would you mix it with the oil? Yeah, you can mix it with the oil and you can make your own charcoal mask. There's all kinds of instructions online if you do a charcoal face mask. It, it, I'm, this charcoal thing is so big. This is the biggest thing we're probably ever going to hear because, again, it's the basis of all filtration. If you want to filter your water, use a charcoal filter. If you want to filter your air, use a charcoal filter. If you want to filter you, you've got to have charcoal. There's no other way to clean your filters out. I mean, what else are you going to use? You're going to use clay, and clay's good, but it's nowhere. There's not, it's not even close to what charcoal is able to do, nor with the history of charcoal, you know, in terms of its human use. Mm. And it's then really as far strong. as the coffee enema, is that something mm-hmm. you recommend every day, once a week, every other day? Some people are able to do it every day. I'm not one of them just because I'm so busy. So I try to get, when I'm doing a cleanse, I try to do it every day, but it's not going to happen every single day. But I know people who do it every day religiously. They're on top of it. It's one of the key things for them when they travel. It's a key, it's a key tool. Okay. So I like it a lot whenever you can, you can fit that in. And what I like to do is I like to dilute it like 50%. So it's 50% salt water, 50% coffee, like fresh brewed coffee, organic, of course, and then pour that into an enema bag. And, and then you have to figure out the rest yourself on that one. Um, these are available on Amazon. Do you sell these things as well? I do not. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not into selling enema kits. Maybe one day, I don't know. You know, there's certain things call me like I really got into the charcoal world because quality matters. And I wanted the best quality charcoal in the world. I have a friend of mine who's my my supplier, basically, and he does all the the making the analytics on everything we get. So it's looked at under a microscope mm-hmm. when we order it. And then when it gets there, so we look at all the world market, what's available. We analyze it all in the microscope and we go, OK, this is the one we want. We order it, then we reanalyze it. Now, so we don't just trust the C of A, the certificate of analysis. I've, I've been burned before, so I, I don't trust certificate of analysis, although it's a good start. I do want to look at it under a microscope and, and that's a key, you know, that's a key thing for me. It's just, I, I've been burned on quality control, so I don't trust anymore. Sorry, I've got to double check. Okay. And I wanted to do that with charcoal because I love it so much. The effects of charcoal on gardening, the effects of charcoal on fertility, it, it just goes on and on and on. It's one of the most profound discoveries of our time because it's carbon. We're a carbon-based life form. Awesome. So starting with memory, detox, do a colonic, do enemas, keep up with it, have some consistency. What else? Yes. Okay. So then we want, we've got to go after the key nutrient for brain, eyes, and nervous system, which is DHA. And I'll show you the one I've been taking right here. This is my cousin's company based in San Diego. It's right here. Let me get this so you guys can see this. This is DHA. So there it is, the Omega, Symbiotica, the Omega. 
And uh, this product, what I mean, what a game changer. DHA is an omega-3 fatty acid. It's the most important omega-3 fat, fatty acid. We actually need three omega-3 fatty acids. And one of them, the primary one is DHA. The secondary one is ALA, which is more terrestrial. That's what's in hemp seed oil and flaxseed oil and chia seed oil. And then the third one is EPA. Now, mm -hmm. of the three, two of them are of marine origin. And this also contains EPA, by the way, but from algae, because that's where the fish get it from. Mm -hmm. The fish don't produce omega-3 fatty acids. They get it from the algae. That's the actual magician that's, ta that's taking the raw materials and forming the omega-3 fatty acids from it. And so we, this is Jacques Cousteau's prediction. He said in the future, he knew what was going to happen to our oceans. It's a tragedy what's happening with the pollution in our oceans. And he said, it, but it's going to come down to the microalgae, the plankton. And since his time, 70 years now, we've identified 200 edible marine phytoplankton. And now we're getting the oil of them for products like this. And the DHA is your main brain nutrient. It's the main nutrient for your eyes. It's the main nutrient for your nervous system. And the other one, the other big one, is another one that my cousin has put out, which is this one right here, which is the Symbiotica B12. Oh. That's another very important brain and nervous system nutrient. Mm -hmm. Now, you got to find a B12 that works for you. This is, this is my cell, which means it's been wound into phosphatidylcholine. It's been put into oil, so it's highly bioavailable. You know, I'm just like that, done, easy, taste good, taste like berries, mm -hmm. and you're done with it. And so that's my ritual every day. And I, there's another one that, that he put out because he's really into the biohacking world. And the, um, what do they call these things? They call them, um, uh, just trying to think, uh, nootropics. That's the word I'm looking for. N-O-O-T-R-O-P-I-C-S, nootropics. And so he invented this one, which is the golden mind. Mm. And that's another cool one. And this one tastes really good. What so that's that like lion's golden? mane mushroom. Mm. Have you heard about lion's mane mushroom for brain? A big story yeah. there. It's a medicinal mushroom that's had, found to have no nerve growth factors or NGFs. And Heracium arenaceus is the name of that, that mushroom. And by the way, also, when I talk about medicinal mushrooms, I'm a wild mushroom hunter and have been for 15 years. It's what I do. It's a big part of my life. And I eat wild mushrooms when I'm at home every day. Mm. It's, but that's where I'm coming from. That's, you know, because we do need things from the different categories, right? If you're not going to have animal food, like for example, I'm vegetarian, at some point there, you're, there's going to be need for some kind of an animal food if you're a vegan. And what's that going to be? It might be cheese. It might be ghee. It might be eggs. You know, I, I can't personally take in anything that involves killing because I'm a vegetarian, but I'm okay with some of those things sometimes, but there's the other categories like the mushroom category and the plant category. We need things out of these different categories somewhere in our picture of nutrition as the years press on and mushrooms, we, it's a, it's a human need. And if we don't get them, then we become our, we, our awareness co can collapse. And this is why you see like Western culture in particular, Oh, oh no, I can't eat that mushroom. That's, I could be toxic or, you know, but, but Eastern European culture, they, they eat up to 300 different mushrooms. And the difference is profound in the consciousness. So as you watch, and I, I think we're already seeing this, the whole freedom of our whole world is going to start flipping over to Central and Eastern Europe and Russia. As crazy as that sounds, that's actually what Rudolf Steiner and Edgar Casey predicted. The Western world is going to collapse into, you know, essentially another form of communism. And the Eastern bloc is going to go totally into freedom, which makes sense. That's kind of the, you know, there's always a, this going on in the universe, right? That, you know, we are free over here. We have great freedom. And then it now is going to go this way. And it's going to, suddenly they're going to be freer than us. You already see that happening. But a big part of that is the awareness created by a diverse and natural diet. Okay, so give me the picture here. Tell me the story. I'm trying to envision you as a mushroom hunter. What does that look like? Or like, okay. you, so I eat. Uh, yeah, well, I, I always have. Yeah, I always have a, a like a a merce, <laughs> right? It's so a big bag, so I can, and it's usually something that I've picked up in Peru or somebody's made for me, and I'm just filling it up with mushrooms. So at the end of the day. So I live part of the time in Canada and I live part of the time in Hawaii. And at the end of the day of the work day, in both places, we'll go for a swim, we'll go to the beach or something, and then we'll go hunt some mushrooms, edible mushrooms, either from trees that come out of trees, 
Those are by far the safest and easiest to understand. Very, very rarely will you ever hear of a, of a toxic mushroom that comes from a tree that's in your ecosystem. It's almost impossible. Um, but then there's mushrooms that come from the ground. Now, the mushrooms that come from the ground, you have to be an expert. You really have to study it and know what you're talking about. And it takes years of learning to really become that. But we pick probably there's at least seven major groups of mushrooms that we pick from in Canada every year, like morels, black trumpets, chanterelles, mm -hmm. um, bolides, um, certain types of, uh, what's the one, I, I, it's such a wonderful one, what's that one? Big, it's called a, hold on, it's going to come to me, it begins with a P. Portobello? A, um, which, what's the name? Portobello? Um, portobellos don't grow where I'm at wildly. This one's like a one that grows, usually grows in fields and we see it growing in the fields sometimes when we're walking home and it has, it has, it's just a really wonderful flavor. It can be mistaken for toxic mushrooms. So it's something I don't really recommend, but they're big. They're called, oh, it's right there at the tip of my tongue. Anyway, we just go hunt the, the forest for these or we'll pick um, hen of the woods or chicken of the woods mushrooms and those grow on trees, but they're more edible and soft and those kinds of things. And then we'll come back and we'll cook those up for dinner and then the rest will be salad and that's our dinner for that night. And this is very important when we're thinking about diet is we need to have things from all over the, the we're, we're really, to develop this upstairs, we really need to broaden what our choices are in food from different categories of food and make sure we're getting a diversity because that nourishes our awareness. Mm. Oh my God, am I hungry? Okay, so memory. You got me on this one mushroom now. And now, see, I've got to take more of that brain stuff. Let me just take another one. Maybe this will help. Who knows? Yeah, when the pee comes up, let us know. So think about doing your enemas, your colonics. You've got to um, understand what works for your body as far as the diet you do, what's best for your ethnic background, as well as how you incorporate food and assimilate it for the best you. B12, DHA, omega fatty acid, see if it includes ALA, EPA, and also golden mine, mind, and then include the, um, the rainbow, if you will, of different types of food. I would assume it's also season appropriate too, the kind of food. Yes, yes, absolutely. I like eating wild food. I mean, ultimately I'm a wild foodist and that, that really turns me on. I, I mean, I'm a, I love eating wild food every day. And that's just some, that's just a thing, you know, if you're, if you're living in the city, it's not as easy. Although if we walk the streets of Beverly Hills, I'm <laughs> telling you, there's so many amazing things there. Outrageous stuff that's just growing, you know, out of the sidewalk. Not that I would eat something out of the sidewalk, but right there on the, on the hill and all kinds of interesting wild edibles there that would make wonderful additions to salads. I'm thinking of the mallow family and some of those um, amazing wild herbs that are just you know, it's part of our natural diet, but because we got into like domesticating vegetables and stuff, now we've got to go buy these at the store, but really their wild ancestors better. I've better. always also found very much, especially around Santa Monica, uh, fennel is prolific. You'll just find it growing wild or if you hike around, you know, Santa Monica, Malibu, it's, it grows everywhere. I see people pass it all the time. I'm like, dude, you know, I'm over there munching because it is exquisite. So delicious. Exquisite, great breath freshener. I like munching the flowers of fennel. Mm -hmm. The actual body of fennel for my body type, it's like I can't really handle. So there's some compound in it that my body doesn't like, but I like eating the flowers. And that's another thing too is it's, we call it the trial and success method where you get out there and you try different things and you just go, oh yeah, okay, this works for me, this doesn't. And there's nothing ever works for everybody. And so you just got to go out there and just expand and, and you're expanding your awareness. When we eat differently, we think differently. Mm. And certainly that has been a big part of my life because I eat so differently than most people. It, I have different thoughts. I think different thoughts. And so in our world, you know, Debbie, that we're in, people are interested in transformation. Mm -hmm. What a tool of transformation diet mm -hmm. and detox really is. What a tool. I love that. I, that makes so much sense because you're actually ingesting the intelligence of something, the life force of something into your body. And so there's really a sort of very deep marriage that goes. Ooh, that was a very psychedelic angle, which is really the truth. We're so scientismic that we're like, oh, it's got this compound and this ingredient and that nutrient. Okay, I get that scientism, but it's also got all these other layers of intelligence 
and life force energy and complexities that are we don't have names for we haven't even discovered you know it's very you know people are like oh, well, that's not scientific look science has only been around for 200 years you, what are you talking about we're just at the beginning of our investigation one thing we could say about science for sure is that it changes right because we get we get better tools we're, go, we're looking at deeper so we're already we already realized from our you know our practices and exercises and expanding awareness that there's many things in these wonderful plants that we don't have names for yet mm. and there's many layers of it energetic layers subtle energy levels life force influencing powers the color alone and what that means yes you know that's a huge aha for me i I am literally from this moment with you on never going to look at food the same because Yay. of this conversation. I am so grateful. That really is like so mind expanding to know it's, that as I bring some- It's a psychedelic something- approach. Yeah, thank yeah. you. It's a, it's a, yeah, because we, again, our, it's, a, it's a Western issue. It's a challenge of our Western mind it's got to be categorized and it's got to be this right here. And it's got to be in this book and it's got to be written. This it's this compound. It's like, that is so reductionist. It's like, there's so many things that are in foods that don't have names. There's so many energies involved. There are so many factors involved, you know, in the Upanishads, one of the Vedic doctrines, there's a great phrase. One of my favorites of all time. This is it. Since, since we're talking about memory, right. And cognition. And that is the subtle energy of your food becomes your mind. Hmm. And then it makes so much sense why we, you would be into wild food as opposed to something that's packaged and grown who knows where, but the fact that you're actually connected to the land and where it comes from and the fact that it was free even, right? Literally growing freely in a free space, hopefully in nurtured soil, and then you bring that into your body. Wow, this is cool. This is very cool. So this David- This could be really fun. Yes. I love nerding out with you. I mean, this is great. So this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Jeez, I have so many wonderful goals. Mm. One, one of the things I really love is farming and gardening. And I want to increase our chocolate production and our honey production and um, our avocado production on my farm and sea buckthorn and continue to develop those projects and apple cider vinegar. We grow a lot of apples and some of these things that are already in motion. But for me personally, I just want to continue to maintain that depth and connection with the earth itself and, and the deep, really for lack of a better term, it's a spiritual connection with the world and the earth and to, uh, get younger and happier. <laughs> and really it all comes down is, you know, this is my favorite phrase and people know me for this phrase. And it, it is really one of the most profound things of all time to my mind, which is it's, we're driving this to the best day ever. Every single day is the best day ever. That's all we've got. Hashtag best day ever. That's how David started. When I first met him before the show even began, I said, how are you, David? He said, Best day ever. Greatest day ever. What a beautiful mantra to carry out in the world. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your brilliance. Thank you. It's been an absolute wonder and a, and a total joy. And wonderful to meet you. And I'll see you at Conscious Life Expo. Yeah. We'll be there Feb 7 through 9. That's right. In LA, at the LAX Hilton. And he will be on Saturday at noon. So absolutely clearly you're going to want to catch more of what David Wolf shares. And I end today's show with this quote from Gloria Steinem, dreaming after all is a form of planning. Subscribe to the show, tune in to the next weeks because on the show, this weekly number one transformation conversation, you'll be hearing James Redfield, also reality relationship coach from TV, Patty Stranger and Lisa Gar. And if you're listening to the podcast and you want to see us, and I highly recommend you do because there's so much joy in the visual, you want to go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Thank you guys so much for joining today. Thank you always for your emails and chats and encouragement. And remember that the secret of success is having the courage to begin the action steps on your dream in the first place.